So yeah, welcome guys to this design your one liner value proposition. Let me just quickly introduce myself. If you don't know about me, I am Chris, the founder of UX Playbook. But before that, I was a business graduate turned product designer. And now I spend most of my time helping designers navigate a fuzzy UX career with UX Playbook. So from building their first portfolio to leading a design team and beyond. But that's enough about me. Uh, I want to talk about the subject that we're here today for is to write your one liner and stand out and learn the framework to effectively generate endless ideas to position yourself effectively. So all of you in here should have that by the time we leave and using this one liner, hopefully you can sell yourself concisely without sounding yuck, easily answer questions like, tell me about yourself. What makes you unique? And should I hire you, right? Those are some of the questions that for us, or uh, for me anyway, trips me up quite a lot. And you can also find this unfair advantage without selling out, right? You can map your talent, skills, passions, and interests to your unique story. So you don't sound like everybody else on the market. Okay, Does that sound good? Thumbs up, thumbs up in the chat. I feel like a streamer anyway. <laughs> um. Okay, cool. Thumbs up. Great. I see some thumbs up, some hearts. Okay, cool. So let's first start by giving you guys context on why this is even important. Why do we need a one liner? Why do we need to find an unfair advantage? Well, um, as a hiring manager for many, many years, I found that a lot of designers just suck at selling themselves, right? I look at a bunch of portfolios and same generic bios, same buzzwords, same cliches, you know, like I design inno innovative solutions, right? And I'm passionate about experience, whatever it is, right? And not fixing this can lead to loss of trust, damage credibility, and weaken your self-esteem, self-belief, and confidence due to all the rejections that you might get down the road, whether it's on your portfolio, your resume, or your LinkedIn, okay? With 1 million designers in the world, the question is, how do you stand out? And today, this is how, uh, this is the question that we want to answer, right? So if I asked you, what is your superpower? What would you say? It's hard, okay? What, what about what makes you special? It's almost always pretty difficult uh, for us to come out with a succinct answer from the top of our heads. Yet we get asked this in job interviews all the time right? Things like, why should I hire you? What, why do you think you're a fit? Or what value do you bring to a company? Right? These are all basically the same questions. What makes it even harder is if you don't think about this enough, then you're going to get stuck during, you know, these sort of scenarios, where it's meeting a future employer or within the interview itself. So you have to make it really easy for them to understand what you do, who you are, and your story, okay? Um, I want to ask a question to the group uh, with some thumbs up. Who's here heard of the Ikigai framework? So the Ikigai framework, we are here in Fig Jam. Let me just kind of hide the things. Okay, so it's a Japanese concept, and it means a reason for being or things that you live for. It's for overlapping circles. And I've adapted this framework to help us answer that question of what is our unfair advantage? What's our one loan value proposition? And hopefully by the end of this session, again, I want to repeat, we'll find out our superpower, what makes us special as designers, why, answer the question, why I should hire you? Why do you think you're fit? And so on. So get your pens and uh, paper ready. Um, you can write this on your phone as well, but it's obviously more tactile if you write it um, down. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm just opening the chat just so I can see that stream of consciousness on the other side of the world. Great. Okay, cool. So let's, we have, we don't have much time. Uh, so 
we have around 18 minutes. So I'm going to start the timer and then we're going to jump into Q and A. Okay. So this is the framework. Okay. So based on this, I've basically adapted it from, from the Ikigai uh, to the unfair advantage. How, how have I changed it? You might ask, well, we're still going to think about our passion. Okay. We're still going to think about uh, what you're good at, but, we know to be true as designers or as people of a profession that what we're paid for and what the world needs is design or whatever industry you're in. And hopefully that's design. Uh, so I'm just going to assume that the world needs design and that we get paid for it. Right. Cool. Okay. So instead of four concentric circles, it's now three. Okay. So you have your talent and skills, what you're good at, passion and interests what a designer needs, and within that overlap is your unfair advantage, okay? All right, so let's kick off this workshop, and I'm going to give you your first activity. I want you to brainstorm as many things as possible within this bucket of talent and skill, right? doesn't matter. You don't have to draw a circle. You can just write it down in a big, long list. But we're going for brainstorming here. So like all brainstorming activities, quantity over quality, okay? As many as you can. And I will start the timer. And I want you to brainstorm. And I'll give you prompts as we go. Are you ready? It seems that you are ready. Two minutes on the clock. And we're going, and I'll pay some music in the background just for you. Okay, so your talent and skills, what are you good at, right? Some accomplishments maybe you've made in the past, skill you've honed over time, things you really spent time on, right? This could be technical skills, soft skills, even the piano. What are those skills that you're really, really good at? So just help me brainstorm. We're focusing on talent and skills. Someone said they can't see the text that goes. So we're brainstorming here, guys. Write down as many things as you can. What are you good at? Skills you spent time doing a lot of. You have 50 seconds left. Maybe I should move out of the way. As many things as you can. Yeah, sorry, I, I can't see myself in terms of what I'm covering. So, okay. So, get as many as you can down. All right. Do we need more time? Let me know in the chat. Okay, so you should have a list of five to 10 things, let's just say, right? Your talent and skill, what are you good at? This is important. Then here's something I did earlier, like uh, what happens on TV. Okay, so <clears throat> some examples that I said, like mentoring, uh, facilitating, video editing, custom workshops, uh, I work really fast, et cetera, et cetera. So those are some of the ideas that I uh, brainstorm for myself, okay? So that's talent and skills. Let's move to the next. Is your passion and interest, okay? This is things that you really like, right? Your things you're super passionate about, things that make you happy, things that you do with no financial reward, right? Think of that. So let me start the timer. 
This could be things like you love reading about history. It could be like you really enjoy the nature, like anything passion and interest wise. Okay. We want to forget about that talent and skill part. Anything that just makes you feel good. Passion and interest. Typically, folks aren't that they, they um they always have so many things in this passion and interest. You have a minute left. Again, quantity over quality. What do you really like to do? Someone once told me that if someone is OCD in something, it must mean they love it in a sense. So you can think about that. What are your OCDs? Okay, we have 30 seconds left. Just get a few more, get down a few more ideas. Yes, recording will be shared. Thanks for asking. We are brainstorming passions and interests now. You can catch up. Don't worry. Okay, last post-it or last ideas. Okay, are we ready? Okay, so we just spoke about passion and interest. So as an example, some of mine are listening to stories. I like new ideas. Um, I like to learn through video, I like music, you know, all these things that I like, and that makes me really happy. Okay. But and then we need to speak about what designer needs, if you guys can see that, right, the third circle. Okay. So what can a designer get paid for? I think most of us here know, or what can our profession get paid for if you are not a designer, okay? You can think about roles and responsibilities. What about hiring companies, right? And you can be as creative here as possible if there's a, other ideas apart from like prototyping, right? Try to be a little bit more specific, okay? This one's typically a little bit harder, but let me just start that timer again and have you brainstorm as many things as possible. What does a designer get paid for? Could it be logos? Could it be complex, solving complex problems? Anything that you think that a designer can get paid for. If not everybody's a designer, I apologize. Again, think about the hiring company's needs or your hiring manager's need. What does he, what do they need? What are some of the roles or responsibilities you do day to day? Or if you wanted to get hired, what are the new roles and responsibilities? Is it like public speaking? Is it like running online workshops? Is it like facilitating a group to a common problem? What are these things that a designer can potentially get paid for or already get paid for? So we have 30 seconds left. Time went pretty quick. So just get down your last few ideas. Okay. 
Okay, let's finish that last idea. All right, like magic, here's one I made earlier. So some of the ideas that I wrote down is presenting to clients, interviewing people, uh, bringing people together on a common problem, shipping MVPs, launching a product, right? These are some of those ideas. Now the fun part. Um, <clears throat> This can get a bit complex. So now what you have is a list of talent and skills and then uh, a list of passion and interests and a list of what a designer needs. What we need to do now is figure out how one of, uh, one of the post-its or ideas, how do they overlap and how do we narrate that into our unfair advantage i'll give you an example here and if um and to do this you'll probably if you're writing on a notepad you can draw a line there or you can you know draw a symbol just so you're like okay this goes with this okay so for example i will zoom in so you guys can see that clearly okay so here so i work fast like i think i work fairly fast okay well passionate interests New ideas excite me, and designers get paid to ship MVPs, right? So my one-liner value proposition, based on these ideas that I just shared with you, I help startups ship MVPs to market fast or faster, right? That would be how I come up with this, okay? And again... I've mapped others. So another example is uh, one of my passion interests, oh, one of my skills, sorry, is video editing, okay? And listening to stories is one of my passion interests. And of course, designers get paid to launch a product, okay? So one of my uh, one-liners is I help brands tell compelling product launch stories. Because of my video editing, because I love stories in general and I launch products. Let's have another example, okay? Because people typically struggle with this. So three examples is good. Okay, so um, one of my talent skills, I believe, is facilitation. I've done a lot of this kind of stuff. So that's one of my skills. Um, I love ideas, right? Similar to, I like new ideas, but I like working on a lot of ideas. And then what a designer gets paid for is bring people together on a common problem or to solve a common problem, okay? So another one-liner could be, I help facilitate teams to solve big problems with novel ideas, okay? So this is the activity. You are trying to find an overlap if you have color pens or pencils or whatever it is, basically from your list, you need to figure out the relationship between them and then put them in the circle of unfair advantage, right? What themes are there do you see? What three post-its from each of the areas can you connect together? Okay, so I want to give some time to do that. All right. And bonus points, if you can sum it up like I did in one sentence. Okay. All right. So again, two minutes on the clock. Overlapping themes from each of the sections. They have to be connected. Uh, that it has to make sense, okay? That's a great question. Um, are they random? Do they have to be? They have to make sense, right? It has to be something of making sense. So, uh, do you need another example, team? Okay. So, right. Someone asked, how how does this work? Like, what makes sense? Okay. So. I'm going to stop the clock here. Okay. What you're trying to do is find one talent and skill and one passion and interest and one thing that a designer gets paid for and overlap it, right? Like I just mentioned. We do need another example. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Okay. So uh, let's do one here. So, okay. I'll just do one on the fly. Um, so, okay. So I like, okay. I think I'm fairly good at, let's just say content creation. Okay. Well, how do I do this here? Hmm. Let's just say I also like strategy games. All right, cool. So these things I think, hmm, I could help folks probably do something around content strategy. Okay. And then what do designers get paid for? Let's have a look again. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to take one that I've already exists, uh, already said because designers get paid to launch a product. So that's quite general. So I would write this as I help brands launch a product through content strategy because I'm good at content creation. I like strategy games and I help folks launch, right? So there's actually infinite ways that you could do this, right? Uh, first, it's going to be a little bit harder to kind of connect the dots, but as you kind of um, walk through it and see like, okay, well, facilitation maybe maps with ideas, maybe maps with, uh, you know, uh, shifting MVPs or implementing frameworks. Does that make sense? Or is it still confusing? Okay, some more time on the clock. This is going to take some practice. It's not a one shot win. Okay. So I'm just going to give you guys and finish this off with another minute. Okay. And you guys can ask me more questions in the Q&A, but I think a lot of folks are writing this down at the moment. And of course, you can add post-its later. If you're saying, hey, the designer needs doesn't make sense for me. Can you add something? Can you map it to something else and brainstorm something else, right? You won't get it right on the first time. And for the folks that don't get it, so if you're still working on this, please continue. And for the folks who don't get it, let me try and pull out another um, unfair advantage. Okay, I'll address that later. Sorry, I'm just looking at the chat, folks. All right. Okay, so one more example on the fly. Okay, uh, this won't be perfect, but I can show you um, how I would narrate my own one-liner. Okay, so custom workshops. I put custom workshops together, great. Um, I like starting new projects. And I wrote here that uh, <laughs> we get paid to tell developers what to do. Okay, so let me just mark this a different color so you guys can see that. Uh, maybe not green, something we haven't done before. Let's do purple. Okay, so potentially one of my one-liners could be I make custom workshops to help developers start UX projects. Something like that. How about I lead teams that lead projects that lead to ROI? That's a little bit generic, I would say. Okay, yes, guys, post them in here. I help businesses through asking the right questions to do user research. Yeah, again, if you can get specific, uh, be a little bit more specific. So like what kind of user research, what kind of businesses, um, uh, how do you ask the right questions, right? Uh, I know my examples are a little bit general, but um, it's also important you have a one-line value proposition and you can also speak to it. Like, why do you like it? Oh, because I'm really good at this or I like this. Okay. So it's a constant kind of refinement. And the first time you, there's overlap of three post-its, you won't get it right. The second time you might not get it right. The third time you might be getting close, 